Do you want to switch to Linux? This is the video for you. Previously, I talked about why I switched to Linux, but in this video, I want to talk about some of the things that I did that I think were very helpful in making that switch actually work for me. So I'm going to go over some key things, I think about four total areas that I think are worth thinking about as you make this switch. Let's get right into it. So one of the key things to do first before anything else is to think about the key things that you do on your desktop for a month, whether that be paying bills, uh, checking emails, any sort of other niche applications that you may use. Think about what those would be in a typical month, because my challenge to you would be to use Linux for a month. And we'll get more into that in the next point. But if you can go and list these things out, list out the applications you would actually need. So beyond a browser, do you need something like Photoshop? And if you need Photoshop, Photoshop is not on Linux. There are several alternatives and there is stuff like Photopea, but it's up to you as to whether that switch is gonna be worth it or not. If you're a big user of Adobe products, Linux is probably not the right answer for you. But if you're willing to try alternatives, there are many alternatives for a lot of proprietary products that you use. And some of those products may even be available on Linux. If those products are available on Linux, do you really wanna use them? That's the question you kinda of have to think through and decide. Some people are very pro open source. That's all they wanna use. I understand the philosophy. I tend to be a little bit more in the middle. I wanna use as many open source projects as possible, but at the same time, I need to get things done as efficiently as possible. And therefore, there are times where I will use a closed source product a la DaVinci Resolve, because the product actually is really good and even the free offering is a great option for people that are just getting into video editing and things like that. I want Caden Live and Olive to succeed and I do hope they will get there, but right now for me, DaVinci Resolve is my best option for that. So now that you have your list of applications and other things, other tasks that you need to do, this is the point where I'd say your goal would be to live in Linux for a month. And some key things that I think are useful about that would be to find a way that you can do this, whether that be installing Linux on an external hard drive. That's what I actually did. I installed Linux on an external hard drive and ran Linux Mint off of that for like a month. I didn't, I booted into Windows to get files. I didn't boot into Windows for anything else. So after that month, I said, okay, I think this is gonna work. Now, obviously, if there are tasks that you don't do every month and you do maybe every three months or every six months and you know about those, they're prominent, definitely wanna think about those. But I find that a month was a good time frame for me to get through some of those initial hurdles but I find living in the environment to be the best way to do so. Try to give yourself really a difficult time to go back to Windows. So like I said, external hard drive is an option. Going in and unplugging your Windows hard drive and plugging in another hard drive for Linux is another option. If you have a secondary computer that you can use, that might be an option. Additionally, if that second computer is running slow in Windows, it may run pretty well in Linux because Linux can still run on older hardware very well. So it depends on how old, but a lot of times it can be really good. The other thing that I would say is that I would not encourage you to dual boot at the start. I have never personally dual booted myself, but the one thing I will say is that Sometimes I hear about people talking about how Linux or Windows 1 will update and wipe out uh, the boot sector and that will end up causing problems on getting f into one or the other system. So that's just something that if you can avoid it, I would avoid doing that right now as a beginner. As you get more experienced, absolutely. If you want to do a boot, go for it. But I'd say the best bet would be to figure out a way to live in Linux for at least a month and just see how it goes. See why you're needing to switch over to Windows. Is it something where you just need files like I did or are there other tasks that you're needing to do on a regular basis where 
there's just simply not an alternative to Windows. Once you've kind of passed that hurdle, you can see, okay, what really makes sense for me? Is it Linux or is it Windows? The next thing I would say is to pick a good starting distro. And you can go and you can Google best beginner distros and stuff like that. And if they suggest anything Arch-based or Manjaro, I would not really look at that list seriously. And I'll explain why, because I'm gonna to get to that. My recommendations are Pop! OS, which is what I'm using right now, by the way, and Linux Mint. There are some others like Zorin OS, and Zorin OS is a great option, especially if you want that look and feel of Windows or Mac. But I would encourage you to try Pop! OS or Linux Mint because they're gonna be different enough that they're gonna make you try to learn some of the ways that Linux works. Personally, I really enjoyed my time on Linux Mint because the options that I needed, I was able to find relatively easily. They were in logical places compared to how I would think of them in Windows. It was another thing that I just didn't have to worry about as I tried to come to grips with everything else. So that would be my tips. Now, there is one caveat and a big one to all of this. If you are somebody who is more technical, somebody who is much more into technology, then you can go with something more advanced. You can go with other options like Archbase or Manjaro or whatever else. But to me, for the average person, these aren't gonna bring a lot of benefits or reasons that you really want to use them. So that's why I wouldn't recommend something Archbase or Manjaro regardless of how easy they are to install. And the reason for this is just because of sometimes the maintenance on these can be more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible for a new user at all. It's just a matter of how much you want to have to deal with that. And there are other kind of things that can come from that and other issues that can come from that that I don't know that as a new user you'd want to approach. Some people will be different. And if you really enjoy tinkering, really enjoy problem solving, troubleshooting, by all means, go with whatever distribution you want. For the average person, I think Linux Mint or Pop! OS is gonna be a great option. If you have an NVIDIA card, to me, Pop! OS is the best option. Now, I know some out there, you're gonna be like, well, I've only really heard of this Ubuntu thing. What about that? And if you are thinking that you are going to be in Ubuntu for like servers, or if you're going to plan to stay in Ubuntu long-term, then go Ubuntu. But some people have some issues with snaps and Ubuntu really pushes those deep into the operating system. It becomes very difficult to remove those. So given that some people don't have a great experience with the speed of snaps and things like that, it could be something where that's gonna be a frustration for you. But like I say, if you're planning to be in Ubuntu long-term anyway, that's your call. But that's just why I would not recommend that as a new user right now. Some people really like Debian. And don't get me wrong, Debian is great, but Debian is just not as new user friendly. It's a little bit more difficult to install. There are other things that you're gonna have to set up on your own after the install. And the same with Fedora, by the way. I like Fedora, but it's just not as convenient for a new user. Once you're more used to Linux and once you kind of understand what you like, what you don't, and what you're capable of doing, then by all means, switch over to Fedora or Arch or even Debian if you want that super stable, uh, minimal updates type machine. And some people really want that. I know somebody at my one of my previous jobs, they run Debian and they really like the stability of that. That's great. With Flatpaks, you can do a lot with Debian now, but there are times where you may want the newer packages and something like Fedora or even OpenSUSE Tumbleweed would be a better option. Figure out what you like. There are so many different things and so many different ways you can customize your Linux experience, whether that be a rolling distro like Arch or Fedora or a super stable distro like we talked about with Debian or going something a little bit different and doing something like a window manager where all your stuff tiles. Even here in Pop! OS, I can turn on a tiling mode. I'm probably gonna be taking advantage of this mode to really experiment with the tiling window manager and seeing what I think. 
The desktops I would encourage you to try to start out with are Cinnamon, obviously, from Mint, but also there's XFCE, that's a really popular one. There's KDE Plasma, that's another one. There's Gnome, and which you'll find a version of on Pop! OS. And then there's a lot of different tiling window managers, and that really is kind of take your pick. I think Awesome and Qtile are probably your best entry points, but it really depends on your experience and what you're looking for. But that would be my advice, is to find things that you can dive into. Whether that be you get more into the server side of things and kind of see, okay, this would be cool to do this on a home lab or whatever, that might be something you do. Or maybe you really like playing around with VMs or something like that. There are many different directions to go and finding something you like and Maybe what you like is just a super stable distro that you use to surf the internet, check your emails, and do any other just computer-related task that you want to do. And if that's it, go for it. That's the thing about Linux that, to me, ends up making it so cool is you can kind of make it your own thing. As you start making your own little tweaks to your configuration files and things like that, you could have a version of a distro that is really unique to you. If you want to keep something really more stock, you can do that too. I find that that is kind of the approach that I think is best is to really find some things that you're more into and that you want to look into further or you want to really kind of use in your overall setup. So what was the key thing that really helped you stay on Linux? What was the thing about Linux itself that really pushed you forward into being like, okay, this is the one I'm going to use. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.